Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Now, if you've ever done a project with a microcontroller board, like from the Arduino boards or the Arduino clones, maybe an ESP32 board, Raspberry Pi Pico, the Challenger 2040, all the boards from Adafruit, <laughs> there's so many boards, you've probably used the Arduino uh, IDE. Use the Arduino IDE to write the program uh, and then upload it to the microcontroller board. Now we've been using the Arduino version one IDE now for several years. It's built on Java and you get a desktop app. Now, however, we have the new Arduino version 2.0. So it's built on a whole new set of technologies, no longer using Java, it's now using web technologies, JavaScript, that kind of thing. And it allows you the same thing, to write your code and upload it to the board. The interfaces are very similar, it's new, it's different, but you familiarize yourself with it very, very quickly. In this video, I want to look at the new features and generally overview of the Arduino 2.0 IDE. So if you want to find out more, please, let me explain. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. Now this is the old Arduino IDE. This is actually version 1.8.19. And now here is the new one with exactly the same uh, sketch in it. So as you can see, it's familiar. It's uh, the same idea. You write the code, you upload it, but it is slightly different. It's modern, it's built on different technologies, uh, and the interface has been improved in several ways. So what I have here is just a short program using the uh, for the Jade Pebble board. That's the ones uh, built by Ground Studio here in Europe. And uh, this particular board has a Cortex uh, M0 microcontroller, but it also has a RGB pixel, a NeoPixel. And so this very simple program uses the Adafruit library to uh, run that. Now the 2.0 IDE has got lots of interesting things you can do in it. First thing, let's make the font bigger. That's always a good one. So if you do Control and Plus, us, we can actually increase the size of the font, which helps when I make these videos. Let's just make that even a bit bigger. There you go. That looks very nice. So if you like to see your code minuscule on the screen, you can have that. If you like to see it uh, bigger, then you can have that as well. Uh, and as I said, great for when I make my videos. Now also, we've got themes. So this is very white. It's uh, if you're programming for many hours, you've got the brightness from your screen, all these big white areas that are just kind of uh, making it quite bright in your eyes. If you go over to File and to Preferences, then we can see that there is a theme section now. We can go to Arduino Dark, and that's their default dark one. Personally, I prefer Thea Dark. Now Thea is the name of the framework that this is built on. Thea is in fact an open source framework for building IDEs. Uh, and it's built using, as I said, the latest web technologies. So that's Electron, JavaScript, and so on. Now, if you click on that, you'll see, to me, it looks very similar to the one you get inside of Visual Code. Visual Code is also built using similar technologies. Uh, so I like VS Code here, Visual Studio Code, and I like the colors, I'm used to them. So that is good, so I like that. So if you want dark theme, now you can get it. Uh, and that is very helpful, particularly when you're doing lots of programming and you don't want that bright white light shining in your eyes all the time. Now, another new feature is autocomplete. Let's just add in a few bank lines here so this comes into the middle. Now, if I go in here and start to type, for example, serial dot, it now tells me all of the functions and things that I can use related to that class. If I start trying print, then I can get print line, and then I can type in whatever I want to type in there, and that's really helpful. In fact, if you hover over things, it gives you a kind of an idea of where that came from. So where is this variable uh, strip? Well, actually, it's an Adafruit NeoPixel uh, instance. Okay, and I, and I actually say, well, go to the definition of that, and look, it jumps up here to the top, tells me where it came from. There's a similar feature where you can actually do, this is right hand click peak definition and it'll actually show you the code where this defines. So here it tells you where the serial code is defined. And in fact, if we close that, if we do right hand click go to definition, here we can actually see all the source code there that's inside of that module. We can start to look at how it works, understand the parameters, understand how we want to use it. So that covers all of the Arduino stuff, C and C++ stuff. Great way to help you along in your programming. Let's go ahead and run this code and upload it to the board. So I've picked the right board as you would do before. You pick it from here. This is the uh, the 
jade pebble, you pick the com port and so on. In fact, you can pick them here uh, as well in this drop down. And all you do is you hit the old arrow there for upload and compile, just as you would in Arduino version 1.0. It compiles it and then it starts to upload it to the board. And once the upload is finished, it starts running. Now, this one just actually flashes that Neo Pixel red, green, and blue. And as you can see here, that is now running. But the program also outputs something on the serial. Here it was here. Uh, serial print line loop. So every time it changes those colors three times, red, green, and blue, it will then print out the loop. Now the serial monitor is up here on the right-hand side. Click on that and you'll get the serial monitor. There we go, loop, loop, loop. You can change the board rate over here. You can change the auto scroll, the timestamp thing over here. You can clear the output. All very, very simple here on the uh, IDE. So you can actually see what's going on, what's coming out of your program. Now here on the left hand side, you've got various little icons. This one is the board manager. So if you do buy a new board and you want to try it out, you click on here, you can type in whatever board it is that you're uh, looking for. So if it's an RP2040 board, there you go. It gives you all the uh, board packs to, uh, associated with that. I've already got that installed for using for the Raspberry Pi and so on. Here on this one, this is actually the library manager. And again, shows you all the different libraries that you can get. So if we type in NeoPixel, it will search through those and give you all of the different options you've got for, for controlling these, you know, these RGB uh, LEDs. And I've already got the Adafruit NeoPixel installed, as you saw that I used that in the program. Now, up here on the top left-hand side is the file manager. And one of the important things now with Arduino 2.0 is if you click on this kind of uh, world icons, it, it means World Wide Web, it means the cloud, then actually this is integrated with the existing uh, Arduino cloud service. And you can upload and download your uh, programs from your cloud account. So in fact, if we click here on options, we can say open in cloud editor. And here we can see that program here uh, in the cloud. So we can actually edit this here in the cloud. Then we can say we can download it again in our IDE. If we're in the IDE, we can make changes and upload it. So this offers you obviously two things, a kind of way of doing backup, you've uploaded it to the cloud, and also you are able to pick up your work when you're somewhere else. You move to a new laptop, you move to a different device, you haven't got the particular sketch you were working on, you can synchronize it uh, and carry on. So great having that built-in uh, synchronization uh, with the web, with the Arduino cloud service. And the editor here is basically the same. You can just edit and it's very familiar uh, as it would be on the other. Now there are plans, you can go, You can. there are monthly plans you can pay for. Now I'm thinking of doing a whole video about the Arduino cloud uh, offerings more than just the uh, scripts the, the sketches you can upload there are other things you can do you can talk to the cloud dashboard and all that kind of stuff if you're interested let me know in the comments and i'll think about doing that video okay let's just make a quick change to our program here let's change this to 200 rather than 250 now if we go over now back to our actual uh, arduino ide we can pull down this new version so let's just get rid of that there. Let's pull down the new version like here. Do you want to pull it down? Yes, are you sure? Because it will overwrite whatever's there. Okay, and now we can double click on that to open it. And as we can see down here, that's been changed to a 200. And it works in the opposite direction as well. You can upload to the cloud the changes that you have made locally. Okay, so that's basically it as a quick overview. We've got the autocomplete, we've got dark mode, we've got peak and go to definitions, you can use the cloud, uh, you can change things like the font size. So generally, I've had very few problems in running this. There are a few minor bugs that will need to be tweaked over the next little while. Certainly now, as lots and lots of people are starting to use it, those bug reports will come in, but it's definitely a worthy upgrade. And about time to get rid of that old Java desktop. Let's have something new and fresh and fast using the latest web technologies. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, microcontrollers, programming, uh, smartphones, processors, all this kind of stuff, then hey, please stick around by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in email address, no spam, but you will get that newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.